All right, we're now on the next slide. We were just talking about what values of X make, um, make an expression undefined. These next three questions are really, really similar to that. It's just that they're, the question is worded differently. And instead of just expressions, now you have functions. So you'll see F of X or G of X or H of X. But notice the numbers themselves are all the same. <laughs> so when we're asked to find the domain of each function, domain, what that refers to is what are the values of X that you could plug into the function? In other words, what values can you plug into a formula? and get an answer that makes sense. Usually the answer is just all real numbers. If I give you a formula, you can kind of just plug in whatever you want and it'll give you an answer. When you have a rational function though, when you have a denominator, you really need to be careful that you don't plug in numbers that make it be undefined. So for number one, there's one value of X that we can't plug into this function. And that would be four. <clears throat> excuse me, because on the previous slide, we saw if we set the denominator equal to zero, X minus four equals zero, we realized that X is, X can't be four. <laughs> so four would make the problem undefined, which means four cannot be in the domain. So the domain would be all real numbers except for four. So I'm going to type that off to the left here, then we'll fill in our little table. So we would say all real numbers I'm going to use my little symbol for numbers, except for four. That's one way to describe our domain because four is the one number that would make the denominator zero. And we can't have a denominator of zero. That would mean our expression is undefined. So here's how we can say that in these two different notations. We have this one called set builder notation and then another one called interval notation. Set builder notation, you're going to pretty much just have to fill in the blank for this. So you'll have these little squiggly brackets. The way we say this in words is the set of all X. And then that straight up and down line is kind of like saying such that. <laughs> so the set of all X such that now we're about to describe X. X cannot equal. That's what this equals with the slash through it means. So the set of all X such that X is not equal to four. <laughs> so all you need to fill in there is just four there. <laughs> okay. And in words, what you would say, if you say it out loud, it would be the set of all X such that X can't equal four. That's the long wording <laughs> way of it. That's what that set builder notation is really saying. On the homework, all you'll need to do is just fill in the blank with the number, which in this case is just four. Which brings us to interval notation. So I believe we've seen this before, maybe back in our first unit where we were talking about compound inequalities and absolute value inequalities. I know it's been a while. Um, so I'm just going to sketch a number line to remind us some things about interval notation. So here's my number line. And really all I'm gonna label on here is four. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put four on the number line right now. Four. And so our domain is the entire number line except for four. Okay, so I'm gonna try to illustrate that here. So it's all the numbers that are less than four, all going to the left. And it's all the numbers that are to the right of four going to the right. So all numbers that are less than four, as well as all numbers that are greater than four. So I've, it's kind of a big chunky circle there, but I've just circled, I've kind of left an open space for four. So the domain is all real numbers except for four. So it's two intervals, one on the left, one on the right. So the way we would write it goes like this. It would go from negative infinity to four, I'm using parentheses because we're not including the four. So that's one interval. That's that left-hand side of the number line. Then we have that U symbol, that's union. And then the other interval going to the right in that positive direction would be four to infinity. So negative infinity to four, union four to infinity. We're using parentheses, not square brackets, because the square bracket would imply we're including the four, and we're definitely not. That's the whole point. We're not including four. So we use parentheses when we're talking about uh, the domain for these rational functions. Okay, so we have two different ways of writing our answer for the domain for number one. So it's all real numbers except for four. We have the set builder notation, the set of all X such that X is not equal to four. 
And then we have interval notation. The kind of by removing that four from the number line, we break the number line into these two different intervals, negative infinity to four and four to infinity. Okay, so that's number one. <laughs> now let's try number two. All right, same idea. <laughs> this time when we take the denominator, set it equal to zero. Remember, you just did this one. It was the second, it was number two on the previous slide. The numbers that we got that X can't equal, I think we got negative eight. So we got X can't equal negative eight and one. Because remember how we factored and we got X plus eight, X minus one. We set them equal to zero. We solved. Same idea, do that again. The numbers that X cannot equal would be negative eight and one. So that's how we would fill in our set builder notation. The set of all X such that X cannot equal negative eight or one. So we put a comma between to list both of them. The interval for this one is a little harder because we're not just removing one number from the number line, we're removing two numbers from the number line. So by removing those two numbers, we're really breaking the number line into these three separate chunks or three separate intervals. So I'm gonna sketch that here. Here's our number line. I'll label negative eight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I'm not being super detailed on my number line. What's important though, is that I have both numbers there in order. Okay, so to illustrate, <laughs> um, to illustrate the domain on the number line, I'm again going to just sort of remove or draw a little circle around those values that we're not including, and then we're including everything else. So we're including everything to the left of negative eight, we're including everything between negative eight and one, and we're including everything to the right of one. So notice how it's three separate intervals. That's what I've set up for you here in the table. There's three separate intervals. We use the union symbol every time in between them. So going from left to right, the arrow that's pointing to the left, that's going toward negative infinity. So our first answer would start with parentheses, negative infinity, comma, negative eight, then parentheses. Union, now we're at that second interval from negative eight to one, again with parentheses. Union again, and then parentheses one to infinity. So notice how for number one, when we removed one number from the number line, it split it into two intervals for the domain. In this example, we removed two numbers from the number line, so it broke the number line into three intervals. Okay, number three, same idea, still factoring, setting the denominator equal to zero to get our excluded values that are not in the domain. There's gonna be two of them again. Again, same function, same problem as before. Um, this is the same as number three in the previous slide. So just refer back to see how we factored that using the difference of squares. We ended up getting, um, we had three X plus five, three X minus five. So we figured out that X cannot equal negative five thirds or positive five thirds. So those are the numbers we're about to type in in our fill in the blank here or write in. <laughs> negative five thirds, positive five thirds. Okay, hopefully you can, again, you can fit it. My, I'm not able to fit my handwriting quite that small in the fill in the blank, but that, those are the two values you would list. The set of all X such that X cannot equal negative five thirds or positive five thirds. And then for the interval notation, it's actually really similar to number two above. If you wanna illustrate a number line, you can. If you're wondering where is five thirds or where is negative five thirds, keep in mind that you can change these improper fractions into mixed numbers or decimals by dividing. Five divided by three, you would three goes into five one time with the remainder of two. So it's one and two thirds. So you have negative one and two thirds, and then you have positive one and two thirds. Okay, if you want to label a number line, great. You actually don't even need to, to answer this question. Um, I just wanted you to visually see that the, the problem is dividing the number line into these three chunks. Um, I'm actually going to erase what I just wrote just to make more space to write the full um, interval notation answer. Just keep in mind, it's really similar to the, one, the problem right above. So it goes like this. Okay, here we go. So parentheses, negative infinity, comma, negative five thirds. Oh, I can't, I can't fit all this. I'm writing really big on the screen. Okay, um, negative infinity comma negative five thirds parentheses union. Now we're at the second interval. Negative five thirds, positive five thirds, 
parentheses, union again, positive five thirds, comma, infinity. Sorry about the messiness. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully you got, you got all three of those intervals. So again, negative infinity to negative five thirds, union, negative five thirds to positive five thirds, union again, five thirds to infinity. And again, visually, the number line is similar to the one right above. It's a full number line with the whole thing shaded without the two points that we found. So by removing those two points, we broke the number line into those three separate intervals for the domain. All right.